plant in front of me is commonly known as mountain mint. It's a North American native in the mint family. It has an extremely strong menthol flavor and aroma. It doesn't spread as aggressively as regular mint. The really interesting thing about mountain mint though is how attractive it is to pollinating insects and beneficial insects. Uh, let's see if we can get some views here. The plants are just completely swarming with all kinds of bees, wasps, butterflies, etc. It's a really great plant if you want to try to attract pollinators, beneficial insects, or if you're interested in keeping bees. In front of me is a milkweed plant, Asclepia syriaca, the North American standard native weed type. And you can see that we actually have plenty of what I think are monarch caterpillars on this plant. I left this plant here in the middle of my garden path intentionally, hoping that we might get some caterpillars, and it looks like we do have caterpillars. Munching away on the milkweeds. These are aphids, which milkweeds are incredibly attractive to aphids. Yeah, you can see them here. Maybe we can zoom in and you can see the little monsters crawling around. Aphids are a true bug. Uh, it's a classification of insects that have uh, only piercing mouth parts. And aphids uh, also, the true bugs, don't go through a full metamorphosis like your uh, Butterflies, moths, flies do. They don't have a larval stage. Actually, the mother aphids are born pregnant and they give live birth to tiny aphids, which are also born pregnant and rapidly give birth to more tiny aphids. And a lot of aphids are parthenogenic, which means they're basically all female. They're uh, rather strange, somewhat alien creatures. But yeah, here's the uh, monarch caterpillars doing their thing. If I remember right, the term for the coloration is aposomatic coloring. It's a warning coloring because the milkweed is somewhere between toxic and distasteful. Hopefully we can keep updating this uh, as these things grow. Maybe we can get some images once they form the chrysalis, which is uh, really rather a beautiful thing as far as these things go. Hopefully things work out well for these guys. The plants directly in front of me are tobacco, and you can see they're all chewed up. Tobacco isn't eaten by deer or rabbits, things like that. Uh, tobacco is, as I'm sure you're aware if you weren't born yesterday and have a brain, poisonous. But there are things that eat it, of course. So we look around here and we find this little monster, which is actually not very little. Uh, use my, sorry about that, use my finger for scale. It's a tobacco or tomato hornworm. It's really gigantic. Kind of a cool looking little critter there. Uh, a hornworm has the horn on its backside. Uh, 
this is the first time I've had a hornworm on tobacco. I've had them on tomatoes many times. This is the first year I've had them on the tobacco and they are a uh, giant moth larva. But what's also interesting to me is that every time I've had them before, they're parasitized by wasps. The wasps lay eggs on the back of the hornworms and then the wasp larva burrow into the hornworm and eat it alive. Uh, hence the basis for the Alien movie franchise. Let me see if I can find any more. Maybe I can find some with the wasp parasit parasites. So this one is quite a bit smaller, uh, a lot younger than the other one. Still no wasp parasites. Here are the same tobacco plants four days later. Let's take a look at the hornworms today. See what kind of wonderfulness we have here. The white objects are all wasp eggs or uh, pupa. I'm not sure which. I'll have to look that up. But this little bugger is on his way out. He will, he's either going to be or has been eaten alive by predatory wasps. And this fellow here is the same sad fate. 